1963 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray by AMT Riddle. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody, welcome back to another great Monster Hobbies unboxing video and today we're going to be looking at the 1963 Corvette Stingray. This is the cool one with the split window, the first and only year of the split window Corvette for the production market and of course it is made by AMT Ertl. And this is a special 50th anniversary edition. So a really, really cool. I can't wait to open this thing up and show you what's in the box. But before we do that, of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this wonderful video so that all the Corvette fans out there will be able to see this thing because you told them it was out there. And pound that notification bell so that the next week when I make a new video, you will be the first to know about it in your YouTube feed. And won't that be amazing? So without further ado, fans, let's go down and open up the lid on this highly glary box topped model of the 1963 Corvette Stingray. Now we get into the custom sports car world of the early 1960s with our 1963 Corvette Stingray. Is it me or is everything going red? Okay. So again, this kit was brought out for AMT Ertl's 60th anniversary. And as you can see, 50th anniversary, pardon me, and as you can see, there is a lot of different Corvettes that they're showing on the side. This is the 63. The box is not very exciting. Okay, this came out in 2002. So it was a little bit early for the 50th because Corvette was 53. But still, they're celebrating it a little early. That's fine. So you don't get very much detail here, just three basic pictures. Of course, this is under the RC2 label, and I don't think RC2 really put in the attention to the models that they should have. Although this is an early AMT kit, just retooled and repopped out. So skill level two, ages 10 and up, glue and paint required. So I'm gonna just put this down here, lift off the lid, doo -doo -doo -doo. take out the instructions here, move our parts over there and hope that the decal sheet doesn't go flying out on me. Okay, so here they actually do give you a history of the 63 Corvette. I'm not gonna read it this time around. Let's just zoom that all the way out. The instructions are very long, but it gives you the modeling tips and advanced modeling tips. So let's open this thing up. So now here you actually get two engine choices. The small block 327 cubic inch with the air cleaner, with four barrel carburetor. It says paint all engine, Chevrolet orange, fan belts black, fan and belts are black, pulleys are orange. And then you also get your choice of the 327 cubic inch fuel injected motor. Now I've actually taken this engine and put it into a 57 Chevy because they had that intake in them back in the days. And now guess what? Here is a, another engine that is actually, I don't know if it's a, the same, but anyway, this one is supercharged. Yeah, it must be engine block. Nope, you get two actual different engine blocks because if you look here, it says engine block number 65 and 66. But if you look at this one, it says engine block number 17 and 18. So a completely different motor on there. Not sure what it is. Have to look at the box. Anyway, moving on. That one has a blower for drag racing. It's probably 427. Uh, anyway, um, then we get into our two wheel choices. So here you have the stock finned wheels. And then of course you get your American five star mags. Oh, and for even more engine fun, oh yes, here we go. It is the big block 427. I was right, I was right. But this one has the Weber carb option with the, let me guess, eight carburetors on there. And you can also build it as a stock tri-carb option for a later Corvette. Then there's even more wheels. Check it out. These are the drag ones. 
uh, using the American mags and there are rear slicks as well. Then here we finally get into our interior. So there's a safety helmet or a Malibu surfer helmet, dude. So you can go surfing with your Corvette. Uh, did anybody ever actually go surfing with a Corvette? I think they're into station wagons. So here you can see an interior bucket which actually has the seats molded in. So all you're really doing is dropping in the shifter, seat belts, dashboard, and a steering wheel. Unless, of course, on the back there's a custom interior, which there is not. <laughs> okay, so that's that part. So then your undercarriage here, you do have the axle blocks. Now the axle is a metal rod that goes straight through, but with the axle blocks, you can actually raise and lower the stance on your car, which was a cool feature. The radiator has a shroud and a fan on the back. You get expansion tanks, batteries, windshield washer, jar, knockoffs for your wheels. There's the lowering block and here's how it attaches. Now the chassis is of course a one piece thing, so there's no suspension. I do believe I'm supposed to read it this way across. Uh, they're showing the drag headers and positioning your headers in your engine. There, your engine bay. <laughs> the rear axle, it's just more of those axle blocks gluing through. And there are raising blocks in the end. Raisin, raisin blocks, no, raising blocks in the back to raise up the rear tires. And of course, you're getting into your body sub assembly. Again, your windshield, you can cut those bars out of the top. The rear view mirror, optional custom exhaust tips popping through the back, and your stock tail lights going in there. Okay, so here's the final assemblies. Now we've got the stock version. You pop the hood in, you glue on your rear bumper. There is a drag racing hood that has optional hood scoops to glue on, and then there's this custom hood for the Weaver carb option. So you get three hoods on there. And then when we move to the back here, there's, of course, the drag race version that they're showing here. So that's right here. So you're getting your bumperettes, a rear drag chute, a customized grill, two fuel tanks, and these cool collector plates off the side for your exhaust. Then when you get into custom, you get the rear bumperettes, taillight housings, and two square taillight lenses, as well as a licensed hot plate housing. And then with stock, it's just two bumpers and the license plate housing. And then here they show you how to put on your decals or decals, how do you say that? And so that is the massive instruction sheet on this vintage old model. Now let's go down and take a look at the actual parts. So here we have AMT's representation of the 1963 Corvette Stingray body. Downstairs in the shop below, they are using an air compressor. So hopefully it doesn't pick up too bad on the camera. Anyway, um, round or RC2 put this nice piece of cardboard in just so that when the, sh the kit is being shipped around, it doesn't crush the roof pillars. So as you can see, it's got the sunken in 1963 style Corvette vents and same here. Now, if you want this to become a 64, you can simply take your hobby saw and cut across here. Um, scrape off some of this chrome trim that's going around your windows and get a new piece of evergreen styrene and lay it right across uh, one of the square rod type styrenes and you can have a 1964 style Corvette without too much modifications. So you can see the nice Corvette emblem on the, I guess, trunk lid and Corvette down here. And then there's the fuel injection type of uh, moniker there. If you don't want fuel injection, just sandpaper that off. And again, nice Chevy detail on the front. Uh, there was some flash. I did clean this kit up a bit with my number 16 hobby blade underneath there, of course among many other things. We got the tail lights quite right on there. And then of course, if we're looking at the body, we have to look at the hood here as a separate piece. This is the authentic 1963 Corvette hood. Uh, they have vents in here. I think those were removed in 64. So you would need to uh, 
take those out with a hobby knife. Probably the chisel blade. The hood simply goes in here and then you twist it a little bit to get it in place. But as you can see, the fit and finish of the hood is quite nice. Very little gaps going on. Okay. Looking at the underneath of the hood, you can see some mold marks. These ones would need to be filled and then textured to uh, duplicate the inside under hood mat. So now speaking of hood options and other components, we do have this hood, which is intended for the blower on the kit. Of course, it's just a stock hood. Well, not really stock because it doesn't have the sink marks in here, or the grills, I should say. Uh, anyway, so there's one of the extra hoods. We have our headers here, our exhaust manifolds. There's an inner and an outer, uh, so that would make up the the four cylinders on each side for your RV8s. There's that helmet there, a parachute for the dragster version, and then these are the deep dish wheel backs, which of course have the um, metal axles going through them. And again, the underneath the nice detailing under the hood with those sink marks again that you'll have to fill. And here we have the second hood. This one has got the raised bit. This is for those velocity stacks and it has these side vents molded into it. These funny things are actually those riser blocks. These are the side uh, exhaust collection dumps, I guess you call them. The triangular air cleaner for the 427. And then here we've got the tricarb option and the four, oh, sorry, eight velocity stacks. This is your serpentine belt for the blower. And these are the uh, wheel retainers for the rubber tires. And again, now you can see here, you got the single pin on these. And there is no detail under the hood, but they are mold marks, again, that need to be removed. A little bit of detail under the air cleaner. Uh, and uh, that's, that's about it for that. And here we have the simple underpinnings of the car, the chassis. These little tabs here on the back fit into the body. The mufflers are here with uh, no exhaust ports coming out, of course. Whoops. Ha. It does have the independent rear suspension with differential that was new for 1963, replacing the long leaf springs from the earlier Corvettes. However, it's kind of just molded here as sort of a single detail. There's these sunken pans, floor pans here for the back seats. Is there a back seat on this? I can't remember now. <laughs> but you can see that the exhaust pipes are molded into the frame, as is the suspension here with the uh, tie rod. Now if we do turn this over, because it wanted to fall over, ha, you can see that it's very basic under here. There's not much going on. Again, some old buttons that you'd have to remove with your number 16 hobby blade just to make this fit together nicely. So the undercarriage, although not exciting, does have a good wheel uh, location, which of course are those riser blocks again. All right, so here we have some mixed parts, but this is the 427 cubic inch big block motor. You can tell from the uh, manifolds here. And you got your oil pan, your distributor, your starter motor. Uh, it, now it's interesting, this air cleaner here is for the 327, although there are some options to it too. These of course are extra hood scoops, or hood vents, sorry. Uh, 427 stock style exhaust headers. And yeah, our air cleaner. You got this round one with the single snorkel, and keep that in mind because there are a lot of air cleaner choices. You just turn this around and you can see the, the detail work on this uh, four barrel intake manifold. Now this part sprue is fairly long, so I'm just gonna move it along as we go here. But there's our firewall, and you can see some really nice detail there on the brake master cylinder, as well as the little cover for your heater, windshield wiper type motor things. Um, 
These are the exhaust pipes for the 327, as well as the int or um, oh, what do you call these guys? <laughs> uh, cylinder heads. There's our intake manifold, the transmission or the the oil pan, and you can see the little mark in here for the uh, metal axles. And you got your water pump cover, a bunch of the expansion tanks. These are the the stock. 327 exhaust. These are the custom ones. There's our radiator wall and our radiator shroud there. Of course the engine block, the fan, some of the uh, rubber hoses under the hood. There's a four barrel carburetor. Okay, let's just move this along here. I think the guy downstairs grinding is messing up my presentation here. Anyway, here's the valve covers and they are um, they have the Corvette logo on here, and they also have those fins on them. There's our air intake for one of the options, the fuel injection option. Yeah, and that's the hose for the fuel injection. And then here, we have a dual snorkel air cleaner. Uh, there's a water bottle, and these are the axle mounting blocks. And of course, there's our battery there. So now we get into our interior tub here. And as you can tell, it's just a one piece with the fender uh, fender skirts molded in place. And then of course our interior here with the factory tuck and roll type upholstery. It's got that gear shift lever there and the brake pedals. Now the seats are molded in place. They won't fall out. Actually, there they are underneath. <laughs> But yeah, again, the same kind of problems. There's some old marks in here that need to be hit with your number 16 X-Acto blade. But again, very simplistic. There's your winch window winders and that sort of thing. Very light detail there. But again, you're talking about a tub. And this kit was made about 1963, 64 era. So again, this is as good as it got back then. And AMT keeps bringing these things out for us now. And to finish off our interior here, we have the Corvette dashboard, and these are the seatbelts down here. But as you can see, there is a lot of flash around this dashboard, so you'll have to take your hobby knife and some sandpaper and carefully go around it just to smooth it out. But despite that, it does have some good detail, like these vents here, and there you can see that a bit better. Like all the instruments are there, even the Corvette signature here is on that dash. Let's turn it around a bit, maybe. Oh, there you go. So yeah, quite a nice, nice kit for the vintage. Now also included in this kit, although you can't really use it with this kit, are these tops for the convertible. Now this is a hard top for the convertible model, and this of course is the canvas top that you can roll up. Well, I mean, on the real car, of course. Uh, looking underneath, there's two sink marks here and here on the hard top, and four on the convertible. Um, I think this might have just been a, a parts tree error, but there is a Corvette convertible as well. I just don't have one. And finally, to wrap up our gray pieces is the steering wheel. And as you can tell, it's got a flash problem as well. And it does have a very tall steering column on there. And of course, that is to go through this big hole in a dashboard and to come out something like that. Now we get into our chrome parts tree, and this one is quite large, as you can tell. There's my hand, there's the tree. <laughs> okay, but it has all our goodies. So here's the chrome knockoffs up here. Um, the the uh, timing belt cover, or timing chain cover, sorry, and the blower ends. There's the chrome plated oil pan, the blower sides, the chrome manifolds. There's the manifold for the fuel injection model. Here's our velocity stacks going up there. You have American five-spoke deep dish mag wheels. 
and then you've got these vector type oh those are the actual Corvette uh, wheels the stock ones there's the grill this is a custom grill if you don't want the bumpers there's the stock grill up there with its bumpers the rear bumpers of course this is the um, grounding area for the distributor and whatnot there's a bunch of these fuel tanks alternators mirrors um, valve covers oh uh, there's the helmet there's the tricarb manifold and a bunch of other goodies you turn it upside down too you can see some of this stuff these are the bits for the chrome exhaust pipes I believe and I'm trying to look at this backwards yeah there's that mirror again And here we have the glass for the Corvette. This, of course, is the front windshield and the rear glass, all molded as one piece, which was pretty popular and an easy way to do it in the 60s. Although, you can take your hobby saw and cut it off there and there and get rid of these here so that when you look at the car from underneath through the window, you don't see these big clear plastic rails sitting in there. Okay, so now we're looking at our tires here. These parts were all included in the bag with the tires. So there's your metal axles and of course your rear tail lights. And so here we have Firestone Supreme tires, although the Supreme part has been removed for some reason. Uh, these are the factory stock tires and as you can tell they are pretty thin and they have that wavy line tread on them. Now these Goodyears that I'm knocking over here <laughs> everything else these are blue streak drag tires and as you can tell they are quite wide and they will stick out of the car body by a lot. Finally we have our decal sheet here and these are some interesting graphics sort of like a twisted spring um, you've got the 50-year Corvette license plates, the I Love Model Cars sticker. These go underneath the hood on the side of the valve covers for the 327. And then we have these Wisconsin Radical license plates. And that completes our review of the AMT Ertl 1963 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. And wasn't that an amazing review of the 1963 Corvette Stingray? And I hope that you will be able to find it out there, whether or not Round 2 makes a brand new version of this thing, or if you find this exact model on eBay or a garage sale or wherever you are, I wish you the best on it. And now that you know what's in the box, you are able to decide whether or not you want to pick this thing up or leave it for somebody else. <laughs> but anyway, let's not forget to like, subscribe, and share before we go away. And pound that notification bell so that whenever I make a video, you are the first to know about it. And until next time, we'll see you down at the Corvette racetrack.